Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert with the second in our series of five things to know about Pro Tools. These are five unconnected things that uh, you may or may not know, and uh, hopefully there's something here that's new to you. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is in, a, in an empty Pro Tools session, I'm just going to create eight mono audio tracks. And uh, we'll go over into the mix window because it's easier to keep track of input and output routings here. Because what I want to talk about is uh, cascading inputs and outputs. You may or may not, not already know this, but um, here, because I created these all at the same time, the inputs have been cascaded. So they go from one, two, three, etc., up to eight. If I hold Option and change that to one, I can put the same setting to all of the tracks. And uh, if I deselect some of these, and then I hold uh, Option and Shift, then I can change just some of them. So if I change just some of them to input 24, here you go, just the ones that have been selected have been changed. This is standard Pro Tools stuff. Okay, so let's put those back to uh, all the same and deselect down here. What you can do is you can recreate that uh, cascading across inputs or outputs or across sends, actually. Let's create some sends. Uh, I'll create a send, there we go, drum room across all of them. And uh, yeah, what we've got is uh, if I want to say uh, cascade the outputs, so they go from outputs one through to eight, all I do is I hold command as well as uh, option. And I can cascade the outputs. So let's go from uh, one, two, three, etc., up to eight. If I add shift to that with some just some selected tracks like so, I can cascade those. So let's do the same with the uh, outputs again, and I'll hold Command, Option, and Shift, and then I'll move those to buses. So there we go. I'll cascade those up the buses. There we go. So that's cascading inputs and outputs. It also works on sends, but uh, really useful, handy for when you're setting up sessions. Okay, next up, what I want to talk about is, we'll come over into here, and I want to talk about consolidating selections. So uh, you're probably aware of that. It's up here, consolidate. And consolidating an edit selection, uh, option, shift, and three. That's alt, shift, and three in a PC. So if I do something like this, and I go alt, shift, and three, there we go. Now, there was nothing in there, so all it's done is it's just created a whole file clip on the timeline. And it shows up over here as a whole file clip, which means that I can go onto the hard drive and find that file and take it somewhere else and do something with it. If that was on a session that had information already on it, then it would print what was on there, including any edits or anything like that, and create a file out of that. But did you know that uh, if instead of doing that, you do something like this, and you add Control to that, so Option, Control, Shift, and 3, that would be Alt, start shift and three on a pc and hit that three you end up with this this is a 1k sine wave uh, it's a minus 20 db 1k sine wave printed into a consolidated selection you can do that across multiple tracks if you want to like so handy stuff i use these uh, for uh, for just when i need a quick test signal when i'm troubleshooting uh, it's uh, you've got no control over what gets created. It's always that. I'd, I'd quite like it if you could make pink noise or something, for example. But you can't. It's a one case sign wave. You, you could use it for profanity bleeps if you want to, but uh, I tend to use it for test purposes. Really handy if you just want to see some meters moving for some reason because you're trying to figure something out. Anyway, that is Option, Control, and Shift on a Mac, or Alt, Start, and Shift on a PC with three on the alphanumeric keyboard. Great, so we've now got something where we can get something up on the meters. So if I were to go here, for example, we don't want to hear this because 1K signs just, yeah. But anyway, we've got something on some meters here. If I come over here, we'll see that on there. Now, there's, there's loads you can do to the meters in Pro Tools. If you right-click on the meters, you see all of these options, and you can go to various standards like PPM or loads of stuff and change the behavior. If you want to change the ballistics and the colors and stuff, come over into preferences and in the metering tab, there's a ton of stuff you can do that's all really useful. But one thing you can't get to from any of these places is this. If I start playing again, if I just uh, hold down all three modifiers, so uh, Command, Option, and Control on a Mac, and click, I can get fat meters like this. They go to about twice the width, and that also happens in the edit window, which is somewhere it's actually a bit more useful because they are quite easy to overlook on small track sizes. But like that, a little bit more significant. And uh, if you like that, that's how you do it. All three modifiers and click, fat meters. Interestingly, it doesn't happen in floating meters. So don't know why that is. 
but it doesn't. And yeah, if you like fat meters, you can get them. Okay, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to instantiate uh, a signal generator. So there's our signal generator. Do not want to hear that. Let's get some pink noise up. That would be useful for our purposes. And uh, then I'll also create an EQ, seven-band EQ. And what we've got now is we've got some pink noise. Now, if when you're trying to EQ something, you find yourself doing something like this to locate what you're looking for, you might even tighten the Q up so you can really home in on it. I don't think that's a good way to go because if you do like a narrow boost with a with a tight cue like that, everything sounds appalling. Much better way to go is something like this. Use something called band pass. You get that by holding control and shift on a uh, on a Mac or start and shift on a PC and just do this. You'll see that gain does nothing, but you can change the frequency. You can also change the cue if you need to, and you can track down what you're listening for, and then when you're done, you can then cut it. So I'll do that over here, same again. You can do it from the knobs, which is actually the way I tend to do it. Find what you want, and then when you've found the thing that you want, you can take it out. So there we are, that is band pass mode in EQ3. Now you can also do that in uh, the Avid channel strip. It's exactly the same. And if I hold those two modifiers, there it is again. So control and shift on a Mac or start and shift on a PC. Excellent. So you probably noticed when I was swapping between these windows, the signal generator and this uh, channel strip, that I was getting one or the other. But I couldn't get both. That's because of this button here, this target button. If I untarget that and I click on here, then I can get both. That's uh, That button directs an action towards that window when you've got multiple windows that that action could go to. But basically, I never, ever click it. And the reason I never click it is because what I find that I do instead is I just shift-click. And if you shift-click on a plugin window, then it opens it without the target button illuminated. That means that it's untargeted, which means that it can stay open. So there we are. That's targeted. That's untargeted. So if I click on another one, I can have another open. That's really, really useful. That's incredibly useful. Also, if you've got a load of floating windows open and you just want to see what's behind them, then a very handy shortcut to know is Command, Option and Control with W. Puts them all away. And then uh, if you want them back, just uh, hit it again and they're back. So that's all three modifiers and W on a PC. That would be Start, Control and Alt. So that's my five things. Cascading I.O., Jumbo Meters, Bandpass EQ Mode, using Shift to open multiple plug-in or floating windows. Target buttons also exist in things like Sense Windows. And uh, the uh, 1K Sine Tone Consolidate Clip Trick. So there's five things you may or may not have known in Pro Tools. Hope there was something new in there for you.